Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Incredibly Weird Toys, where we take a deep dive into a particular decade to uncover some of the weirdest toys out there. Today we will continue our series by getting down with the toys of the 90s. And as with our previous episodes, we only have a few spots, so if you can think of any super weird 90s toys, let me know in the comments down below and you may just see them in the next video. So let's get on with this pimpin' list. Oh, Snap. Number six, Steve the Tramp. Dick Tracy's gonna clean up the city his own way. Can Tracy and Ketchum do it alone? Dick Tracy was a 1990 American action comedy based on the 1930s comic strip character of the same name. The film was both directed by, produced by, and starred Warren Beatty, performing alongside such names as Madonna and Al Pacino. No! 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 The movie follows Dick Tracy, one of the toughest police detectives in the city, who is hell-bent on hunting down the city's biggest crime boss, Big Boy Caprice. But Tracy has his work cut out for him. When an orphan boy crosses his path, Big Boy begins rallying his troops and his loyalty is tested to girlfriend Tess Trueheart by seductive singer Breathless Mahoney. Although receiving mixed reviews from critics, while the studio was disappointed it didn't match 1989's Batman's numbers, it's no doubt that kids and adults alike enjoyed the ragtag 30s slang talking gangsters, costumes, prosthetics, and yellow trench coat wearing Tracy. Of course, as with most 90s movies, a toy line was not far behind, noted for such gems from Playmates toys as the Dick Tracy two-way wristwatch. But it was these roughly four and a half inch stocky figures that comprised the core of the toy line. Let's face it, Dick Tracy was appealing because of its weird looking characters with odd names. And that weird really did translate well to its figures, making this a very odd-looking line filled mainly with villains. But apart from the ever-collectible and hugely expensive The Blank figure, which had a removable mask to reveal the true identity of the character, there was one very odd character with a particularly offensive write-up. Meet Steve the Tramp, who was the kid's abusive boss. What'd you get? Didn't say me no chicken. Yeah. Ignorant bum with cauliflower ears, dirty and scarred from a life on the streets. You'll smell him before you see him. Recruits runaway children into his army of little street thieves and con artists. Steve the Tramp will use and abuse any young, helpless prey he comes across. Something tells me that this sort of write-up regarding the homeless wouldn't fly all too well in today's society. But with such a variety of figures on the market, these little 30s gangster toys were overshadowed by more appealing options like the Ninja Turtles, X-Men, and more. Leaving this dick untraceable. Oh. Oh, let's go! Number five, Stone Protectors. We're the Stone Protectors! Our stones of power glow! Stone Protectors was an ineffective marketing attempt by Ace Novelty in the 90s, which attempted to appeal to boys by fusing the ever-so-popular Ninja Turtles with troll dolls. Troll dolls date back to 1959, when Thomas Dam created wooden troll collectibles modeled after the trolls in Norwegian folklore. Later in the 80s and 90s, trolls took a hold of the toy market in America and became one of the most popular toys on the shelves. The majority of the trolls came from two companies, Russ or Ace Novelty. Ace distinguished itself apart from your average troll doll by placing a little jewel inside the doll's belly button, which was meant to be wished upon by children. Treasure trolls with a jewel you can wish on from Ace. At the time, trolls were marketed towards young girls, but in 1992, Hasbro joined in the fun and decided to market trolls to boys under the name Battle Trolls, which were initially somewhat successful but failed to catch on. That same year, Ace wanted to get in on the action with a boys troll line and came out with Stone Protectors. The colorfully clad figures were about five inches tall with soft rubbery heads and colorful synthetic hair. When you rotated the right arm, a flint module ignited inside its chest 
chest, creating a bright spark inside the translucent window. In 1993, the stone protectors got a short-lived one-season, 13-episode animated series to help with advertisement. But before becoming the stone protectors, the group played in a failing rock band called the Rock Detectors, where one day they find some glowing magic crystals and are not only turned into trolls, but are each granted with some unique powers, like super strength, turning into a samurai, and being able to climb better. Their mission was to protect the powerful crystals from the evil Zok, who desires their powers and hates music. Later, the series also received a tie-in video game released for the Super Nintendo. As unique as these flint-chested, weird-looking dolls were, the toy line as well as the cartoon were short-lived and didn't catch on. With so many options out there for boys in the 90s, these rock and rollers were overlooked. Number 4. Balzac Balzac, it's the craze. Whack it, Balzac. Turn up the fun with Balzac. You can smack it and you can whack it. Balzac. Balzac is the newest fun. Balzac. What? It's pronounced Balzac. It's actually pronounced Balzac? Yeah. Say what? One of the better toys to come out of the 90s, this fun Balzac with a catchy but suspicious sounding name was first released in 1989, but soared to popularity in the 90s with its sentient testicle mascot. Made by Milton Bradley and distributed throughout the years by such companies as Hasbro and Whammo, this balloon ball offered hours of entertainment both indoors and out. Put the Balzac balloon in a sack, blow it up now, give it a whack. The Balzac balloon ball was a cloth sack usually featuring very appealing fluorescent prints to which a deflated balloon could be placed inside. Once inside, you could then inflate the balloon to make a Balzac balloon ball. To really kick things up a notch, you could put coins inside the Balzac where the weight of the coins caused the ball to veer off randomly when kicked or thrown, making it harder to catch. If water was added instead, the balloon's speed would actually increase after you threw it. The original Balzac was a classic in the toy industry and could be found regularly being sold at Disney World carts and shops up until 2011. Number 3. Monster Face The gruesome monster head you make and remake into the most monstrous monsters imaginable. This terrifying abomination accidentally released from hell by Hasbro in 1992 was a terrifying twist on Mr. Potato Head. A grotesque zombie white-faced Dracula monster served as a blank canvas with a multitude of holes that children could attach several accessories to like bugs, blisters, and fangs. It was a fairly decent sized head with a pretty nifty gimmick. You could actually animate your creation and bring him to life by moving his eyes and jaws with a set of levers at the base. It also had a small air pump to inflate attachable pulsating blisters to, and came with a can of nasal drip monster gloop. But poor old monster face soon wasn't showing his face around toy stores no more. After parents across the US returned the grotesque face back to stores, claiming the toy gave their children nightmares. Number 2. Shout and shoot. Now this is what I call back talk. Fire! There was the Shout and Shoot original and the Shout and Shoot 2, which were essentially exactly the same, but with just a different design. Shout and Shoot was a revolutionary voice-activated water gun released by Cap Toys in 1994 that children could fire hands-free and offered a multi-directional shot. Water guns were a favorite pastime for decades, and in 1990, the second known water gun utilizing an air pressure system birthed the first super soaker, the SS-50, which was able to shoot a powerful continuous stream of water. The Cosmic Liquidator was technically the first air pressurized water gun made by Sun Products in 1978, but it was never popular. By 1992, super soakers were in the hands of nearly every child during the warm summer months and became one of the fastest selling toys. With this success came many different variants and gimmicks. But of course, other companies wanted to dip their hand into the water gun cookie jar by enticing kids with gimmicks of their own. Enter the Shout and Shoot by Cap Toys, who were best known for their battery-operated candy products. You wouldn't shoot a guy in the back now, would ya? So Don't mess with Shout and Shoot 2. This was definitely one of the more imaginative toys from the 90s, which seemed like a blast from its commercial depiction, but in reality, the premise wasn't executed well. Shout and Shoot was a voice activated, hands free water gun to which children would yell fire in order to shoot a stream of water from their battery operated reservoir tank attached to their belt and funnel out of their headset spout, which could be swiveled for a multi directional shot. The commercial 
Marshall depicted gorilla-style sneak attacks soaking their victims in thick streams of water instantaneously. Problem was, the water stream was not instantaneous at all when triggered by voice activation. It took about two or three seconds for the water to travel from the belt reservoir to your head. And what came out was no blast of water, but a thin stream. Which really took the fun out of sneak attacks. And unlike the commercial which shows the shooter yelling, fire, 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 for a continuous stream, kids had to yell, fire, for a continuous squirt. Yelling, fire, 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 would result in short, delayed bursts. Of course, you could say any word to activate the trigger, but kids either didn't know or were dead set on yelling fire, 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 to the dismay of many adults who felt it was inappropriate to yell fire in case there was an actual fire in the neighborhood. Fire, 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 fire. And number one, the snack time kid. And when you think she's through, These little cabbages came into the world officially in the early 1980s and still see no signs of wilting today. Originally called the Little People, later changed to the Cabbage Patch Kids in 1982, these dolls were the hottest ticket Christmas item in 83, where desperate parents forked out hundreds on the secondary market and even resorted to violence to snag one. These hard-headed, soft-bodied baby dolls each came with their own unique name and birth certificate, allowing prospective adopters a chance to raise their own little baby that was birthed from a cabbage. And this adoption gimmick took the world by storm. Say hello to 1995's The Snack Time Kid by Mattel. I have to feed my cabbage by Snack Time Kid. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! Mattel began experimenting with all vinyl version dolls, which allowed for more functions and activities than just a soft-bodied doll. Christmas of 1996 came, and the eating snack time kid that could actually eat was flying off the shelves. The dolls featured battery-powered mechanical jaws, which were designed to mimic real chewing action when a child placed some plastic food next to their mouth. A powerful set of mechanical rollers rolled the food inside. Problem was, the rollers, which only rolled in one direction, did not stop until it sensed the mouth cavity was empty. And oh no, Snack Time Kid didn't just like plastic food, they liked hair, fingers, clothing, other toys. Soon complaints began flying in, fingers were getting caught in the doll, injuries were reported, the cannibal doll began to eat hair to the point parents had to cut their child's hair with scissors to free them from the jaws of the Snack Time Kid. That, if left to their own devices, would have most likely eaten the child alive. After well over a hundred complaints, Mattel pulled Snack Time Kid from toy stores and issued a voluntary recall, which allowed parents to trade their dolls in for a $40 refund. So there we go, six incredibly weird 90s toys. I hope you all enjoyed this list, and in the comments down below, please let me know if you had any of these toys featured today, and do you have any other weird toy nominations for future episodes? So thank you all so much for watching, and stay legendary.